Today we're talking about event-driven programming. In coding, event-driven programming is a paradigm or model where the flow of the program is determined by events. In other words, what the program does depends on the actions of the user or the system. Event-driven programming has been around since the 1960s, but other models of programming have been around since the 1840s. Sequential programming is very old and it has a definite beginning and ending point and a certain flow to the code that the programmer puts into the code. With event-driven programming, there is no preset flow to the code. In sequential programming, changes to the code are handled by instructions within the code called branch instructions. But if we want to change the code execution in event-driven programming, we just click other buttons or drag other things. So all of the changes to the code execution is through the events and the event handlers. If we need to wait for something to happen in sequential programming, we have to add empty looping structures where it just goes round and round and round not doing anything for a number of loops. In event-driven programming, we have an event called a timer event that will pause the program until a certain situation arises. So in other words, with sequential programming, the program is in control. The program runs, and if the user wants to input something but the program isn't in that spot yet, then the user has to wait. Under event-driven programming, the user is in control. The user clicks on a button, and then the code executes for that and there is no waiting that's required. So in event-driven programming we have something called events. An event is any interaction that the user or the system itself has with the application. One type of event is a user event. A user event would be a mouse click, a key press, typing in a text box, dragging something across the screen. Then we have automatic events, sprite collisions. If you have a game where we have a ball that bounces around, if it reaches the edge of the screen or it collides with a paddle or another object, those are called sprite collisions and that's a different type of event. The next type is a sensor event. The device running the app has different sensors on it, a GPS, an accelerometer, and we can check those sensors for certain things like whether or not the device is in portrait or landscape orientation. And the last category events is called a timer event. Timer events happen at specific time levels. So we can have an event that happens every second, every millisecond, or any time period in between. Whenever that time period elapses, then the next event happens. So with the events, the event acts as a trigger to make the app do something. So the app waits there until it finds that trigger and then it determines whether or not there's any code attached to that trigger. And if, it, if there is, it runs that code in the event handler. And the event handler just has the code that is attached to an event that is linked to an object. In other words, I can have two objects on the screen, two buttons, button one and button two. They can both have a click event. It's the same event, but they're attached to different objects. If I click button one, only the code in the button one click event handler will run, not the stuff that's in the button two click event handler. So how does this all work? Well, we start by executing the app. Once the app is executed, it has code built into it that waits and listens for an event to occur. When an event occurs, it looks in its list of event handlers to see if there is an event handler that is linked to that event and that object. And if there is, then it runs the code that is in that event handler. And you can have many different event handler containers within your code to handle lots of different things. So are you a little confused? Let's think about it this way. In the sequential model, it's like an escalator. An escalator moves from floor to floor, it continually runs, and it processes the people that are on it. If there's a person on the escalator, it processes them by taking them to the next floor. If there's nobody on the escalator, it still runs. In other words, the escalator controls whether or not it's functioning. In the event-driven model, it's more like an elevator. On an elevator, the elevator car doesn't stop at every single floor. There's a button that the user presses, and then the elevator will stop at that floor. If there hasn't been an action by the user, the elevator will just go on by. Think of how slow an elevator would be if it had to stop at every single floor to see if anybody was going to get on or off. Okay, let's take a look at some examples from the apps that you've already created. 
In the first one, we had an object called the ball, and the event was called Edge Reached. When the ball got to the edge of the screen, it bounced back in the other direction. In the second lesson, we had a button called Slow Down, and that decreased the speed of the ball when we clicked on it. So the object was the Slow Down button, and the event was Click. In the next lesson, we had a list picker. When the user picked something from the list, then the event called After Picking was run. So the object was the operator list picker, and the event was After Picking. In lesson number four, we had some checkboxes. We had a Celsius checkbox control, and whenever the user clicked on that so, and changed his state from either checked or unchecked, then the changed event ran, and it checked to see if there was a check mark in there and did something if there was. And finally, in the last lesson that you just did, when you shook the device, there was an accelerometer object that checked to see if the device was shaking. And if it did, then it played the purr sound and vibrated for a second. So that touches events just a little bit. In this particular case, there's a lot more to event-driven programming than what's in this video. So if you want to learn more about events and event-driven programming, especially in App Inventor 2, then Google's going to be your friend. But what we need for this class at this time is we just need to realize that for every object that we put on the screen, there may or may not be event handlers connected to that object where we can put code that will run when that event happens to that particular object. So when I click on a button, I need to make sure that I have code in the button click event that will run in response to that button click. Or if I drag something across the screen, then I have code in an event handler for the object that I'm dragging so that the app can do something after I'm done dragging it. So whether you click, drag, drop, whether you look at a sensor to see if the device is shaking or is in portrait mode or landscape mode, all of these things are events. They're all connected to objects in your app and then the code goes into those event handlers so that you can run the code that you want based on the event that happened. So that's the tip of the iceberg with App Inventor 2 events and event-driven programming.